Hello everyone and welcome back to my tutorial campaign in Realistic Progression Zero, the campaign mod for the Realism Overhaul Suite of Realism Mods for Kerbal Space Program. In the last episode we designed uh, an enhanced, almost Gemini-like version of our simple one pilot spacecraft. We also designed uh, a quick docking target rendezvous vehicle uh, using our existing um, uh, Scorpion B launch vehicle. Um, so we're going to go ahead and rename these to what they'll actually be. This is going to be Beagle 3 and we'll rename the target vehicle to go with the um, with the same name as the as the spacecraft. Uh, and we want to actually uh, I think build that first and we'll launch it first. Um, because what we're going to want to do is dock first um, and then go ahead and do our duration contracts. Dock and undock. Uh, we have first docking and first space block. We have past the Carmen line. Um, we already have got plenty of science data from our Earth. We might as well take a human orbital mission. Um, that looks like it will have... So, right now it's September 21st, 1956. Um, it's only going to take 42 days, but I think we still don't want to ac actually accept that contract until we get closer to, and, until we basically have all that stuff built. Um, we only have to orbit for nine hours with this contract, so that's fine, uh, and the parameters are fine. Uh, and it'll fund our actual launch just just fine. Uh, we expect most of these human orbital contracts to pay about this, but as I said, we're going to wait until we're somewhat closer before we accept that contract. So we're going to go ahead and ah, now there is one interesting wrinkle here, and that interesting wrinkle is that. Um, We only have one pad at level two. That means that because even this BSTV is over 40 tons, we're going to have to use that pad. We could pay to upgrade the other pad, and I'm, I think we probably do need to do that. So we've swapped to, uh, excuse me, I'm not sure why things are dinging. Um, solve that. Um, so, yeah, I think we probably better start upgrading this pad. 75,000 funds. Yep. We'll do it. Alright, now, that's going to take 138 days. So, not really within the time frame we need, so we're going to have to do this interesting thing where and I it is sort of cheating to do it this way but it is the advantage that liquids have over solids and this interestingly is why um, large solid launch vehicles are sometimes proposed but they're really not viable things um, because you can send Basically, you send these propellant tanks out empty, and then you pump them full of the pad. Um, this is also, incidentally, why you have segmented solids, because you stack them on the pad rather than trying to stack them all up, or, or if they're monolithic, just put them all together. 
uh, in your assembly building and then have a crawler that can manage you know 4,000 tons. Um, the Saturn V's mobile launch platform when crawling, remember, was only uh, taking what? Um, about 20 tons in the S4B. I think a, what, about 80 tons? Or even only 40 tons? I forget in the S2 and then oh, I think it's about 200 to 500? I forget. Anyway, at any rate, it was probably only carrying like 500 to 500 to 600 tons out to the pad, and then all the propellants were pumped in. Um, if you start adding solids, then you've got to actually deal, you, you can't obviously pump solids in. So that's a problem. Uh, Alright, we edited this vessel. And we still want to build it first. Because um, Could we, could we just launch them back to back? That's an interesting question. Um, hmm. It's about six or seven minutes to orbit. Um, hmm. I think it's probably safer to wait a day. So let's go ahead and warp to that being ready and we'll roll it out to that pad let's warp to this being ready and we'll roll it out to this pad alright now I'm gonna go ahead and launch this into the plane of the moon because, as I mentioned towards the end of last episode, we're going to use MechJeb's ability um, to plot, to do a pork chop plot, take transfer windows into account, to figure out when our next transfer windows to Mars and to Venus are. So, uh, we're gradually pumping that stage full. Let's go ahead and figure out. Oh, that's, that's geostationary. I mean, that's. Okay. Set as target. We are. Alright. So, launch into plane of target. Now, I have to reset these numbers to be right for this launch vehicle. Um. I think about like that. thought I told it to launch into the plane of the target. Well, we'll do that now. Okay. Okay, five minutes away. We're very low tech. We're doing this entirely on batteries. We have solar panels neither on this nor on the the actual crewed spacecraft we're going to send up after it. Um, but we don't have the tech yet. <laughs> okay, and we're going to do our usual trick of going a little bit extra south first. Let that relative inclination increase some. Because we 
need to be getting down to the moon's inclination first word. Still 28.6 and yeah we're gonna want to get rather close to the we want a 28.36 inclination. Less than a minute 30 remaining on the burn. There's a picturesque picture. Okay, now we want to reverse this and come rather far left. Watch that inclination reduce. Okay, now we're back to the inclination where we started, basically. And now it's definitely going under 28.6. and lower the Kimball. Let's lower it a bit more. And let's raise up a little bit because we're definitely going to want to extend our time to Apogee at least a bit. Alright, we passed the Carmen line. Let's ditch our fairings. Okay, look at that relative inclination going down. Alright, and that I think is about as good as it gets. sort of waddling. Alright, we're about two kilometers per second short of orbit. That leaves about 13, 1400 in the stage. I think we want to zero our pitch.
Okay, and let's try to tweak inclination just a little bit. Pitch up. Interesting. Did we have a failure, or did I just miscalculate things? No, I just miscalculated things. That's fine. Whoops. We are off plane. We are very much off plane. Let's go to 31. How's our pitch up? That is decent. That is very decent. Okay, so a relative inclination is acceptable. Uh, we don't have to nail it because this is just for interplanetary purposes. Uh, we just need to be relatively close to the plane of the ecliptic. So we want maneuver planner. We want advanced transfer to another planet. Let's look for a Mars window. Well, let's look for a Venus window first. Porkchop plot tells us that our best option is 3561 meters per second, departure in 363 days, 11 hours, 27 minutes, transit duration 147 days. I think that's an opposition transfer for Venus. Um, so we want a raw time alarm. We don't want it attached to a vessel. Venus, 3561. In 363-11-26-35. Close enough. OK, so that's our first window. Now we'll go target Mars. That's interesting. That's a really crummy Mars window, isn't it? Wow, that's a really crummy Mars window. Uh, can we zoom out some? All right, now it's finding something better. That's three years away. There's actually a Mars window in 76 days that's in the 4700 range. But let's look at this. Transit duration, one year. So that's an opposition transfer. We need a conjunction transfer. Uh, let's reset. All right, that right there is a conjunction transfer. So let's add this to Mars conjunction. Um, four, three, three, five. Oh, no, that's. Junction four three three five. Uh, it's not attached to anything. It's a raw time alarm. 
and it's one year two two six five fifteen forty seven twenty five Alright, now the reason why I was looking for a conjunction transfer is this. At the tech node that we have, um, we don't have, what well, are about to have, or whenever we unlock um, improved instrumentation. Did we already unlock it? Let's find out. Uh, no, we have 30 days left. Um, With that, we'll have access to an antenna that will let us get to Venus for sure. We'll even let us get to Mercury, but will only let us get to Mars at a conjunction transfer window. So see, we're here. Uh, given that that conjunction transfer, um, let's zoom out a little. All right, and that was. Okay, that's in one year and 258 days. So, one year. Uh, what was that? Oh, that's that's that. <laughs> that's that thing we sent out into the solar SOI. Uh, anyway. So, so, this is Earth's orbit, this blue line. Now, one year and... One year and 265 days is one year, 90, 180, 270. That puts Earth about here. Mars does its thing. Conjunction transfer means, and that duration is 146 days. So that bring Earth to about here. That means Mars will be about here. So shortest distance. And so we only fly that path. Opposition transfer, that's those things with the, like, the, let's zoom out so you can see. Uh, that's with the one-year transit duration times. Um, that means that we spiral slowly out and end up here in a year's time, where Earth is back there. So we have to do the 150 million kilometers, another 150 million kilometers, and then even more. So our antennas can't do that. So we're we're gonna Yeah, we're <laughs> they, we're not gonna be able to do that. Um so yeah. That's all that setup. So we're gonna go ahead and go back to the space center now that this is in orbit. this little docking target. And we're going to calculate when to launch. So, what was that? Oh, that was the upper stage for Beagle 2. I think we can get rid of that. And we can get rid of the upper stage for WISP-1. Now, this has an MET of 14 minutes. So, if we're going to launch into the same plane, we know that we're going to need to be Uh, 23 hours and 42 minutes from now we'll be in the same plane. Then another let's see forty two minutes okay. And let's actually do nothing. That's fine. Close alarm details. Um, 
I believe that we can just now warp to this. Ugh, we can't actually warp to the rollout because it's doing the reconditioning. But we'll warp to the rollout in a sec. Alright. Oh, it auto-deleted the alarm. Whoops. Well, um, we can calculate it from its MET again. Two days, 17 minutes. Um, okay, so we are, in fact, I think just lost that window. So Let me look at the orbital track again, just in case. Um, but I'm fairly sure. Where are we? BSTV3. Um, I am reasonably sure that we. just passed the launch window for it. the orbit would highlight slightly better. Um, ah, no, apparently I'm off by, yeah, I'm off by a few hours. So yes, let's, we are in fact rolled out, are we not? Yep, okay. So let's get close. Oh, I selected Echo 5, that's why. That makes more sense. <laughs> I was wondering there. Yeah, we're right. No, I think we're actually we're right on track to launch. Uh, so we'll go ahead and do that. Um, now, ideally, we would launch to rendezvous and to launch to rendezvous, we'd want to launch when that probe is fairly close to the Cape. 14, yeah, so about 12% of its orbital distance away from the Cape. But um, we're not going to wait for a rendezvous launch, because that would take forever. Um, yeah, let's send up Eloise Martel. Why not? Now, if memory serves, this was an interesting thing to get to orbit. It did not have much in the way of... <sighs> Accessibility. Access. Capability. 40. Now, we need to set up our target. And it's somewhere over here, isn't it? No, that's Echo. Two. Warbler. Uh, I should get a mod that gives me a list of by list by name, because finding this thing is going to be a pain. Um, let's look at what orbit we're right on. It's that one. Set as target. Okay. So yeah, we're half an orbit away. That's gonna that's gonna take a little while to rendezvous with. Um. Oh, and I didn't accept that human orbital contract. But that's okay. Uh, I'm fairly sure that I can 
do it this way anyway. Um, is inclina relative inclination increasing or decreasing? It's increasing. All right, let's let's go ahead and just launch this now then. We'll correct their inclination on the way up, which I'm fairly sure we can do. It will require going somewhat south first. Because the Earth has rotated past the plane of that orbit, therefore to get back on the plane of that orbit we're going to have to go south uh, and then go north again. You basically need to go south to match that. Alright, so we've actually passed our desired relative inclination difference. Point 18. I think actually I want to go south again a little bit more before we head back north. Now let's line up on, tw on 95 degrees. Okay, and now we'll head back to 90. 30 seconds to burn out. Adjusting our heading. Five seconds to burn out. Just preparing for staging. Miko, separation, ignition. Good ignition, abort tower separation. Pitch up. All right, so clearly we need to go south more first before correcting. That's an awful lot of delta V for one stage to provide. We really should put a fourth engine on that stage, stretch it, and it'll be more balanced. Or we could just get H1s in the next node and then we'll be okay. up a bit more. Steering losses look decent. Pitching down a bit because we don't want our apogee to rise too much. I would rather 
pitch up and incur steering losses with a low apogee than have a higher apogee at this point, I think. We do want over 150, though. But it'll be just over 150. Pitch down a little bit more. Okay, looks like we didn't go south enough. Pitching up a little bit more. Pitching up a lot a bit more. slowly but surely. Okay, and we're going to launch to... I guess we'll do the usual 280. All right. Holding that time to apogee just about where I want it. So just that back and come down level. Three meters per second left in that stage. I would call that a nail descent. All right, so our spacecraft has orbit. Man, that was really, that was cutting it razor fine. So, we have relative inclination of 0.21 degrees. Now, Match plane, let's see how much plane change costs. Twenty seven point seven meters per second. We have enough delta V that we can afford that. Okay, we'll engage the thrusters. We'll come around to our maneuver node direction. and change MechJep's tolerance because with these little thrusters we want a tighter tolerance. Um, yeah, I'm annoyed that that relative inclination isn't closer, but we could have made it closer by waiting another day. But, you know, oh well. Kind of didn't want to wait. So... Let's look at what the So we need to complete that orbit for the EVA. 
then we need to do the EVA, then we need to transmit the data. Oops, we passed by that node. Oh, I think interestingly what I forgot to put on this was any kind of antennas, but happily our capsule has its own antenna. Ah, uh, so let's execute this node. Man, that really does kind of look like a small Gemini, doesn't it? All right. Now, happily, these don't require ologing first, so we're good to just light them up. And Eloise gets a nice view of the Earth passing below her. And planes matched. Now let's go ahead and do a home and transfer to the target. Uh, no, we're not waiting 32 days. I find that hard to believe. Um, The issue, of course, being that uh, our apogee and perigee closely match that, so the periods are the same, so we're not actually changing our relative um, position in the orbit. So we're going to raise our perigee up to be close to our apogee, which should not cost very much. Three hundred. All right, so let's actually wait until we get to apogee and then do that. Whoops. Oops. Oh, I didn't. I thought that was two ninety. It was actually two sixty. Okay, three hundred by three hundred. All right, now let's see what the home and transfer calculator says. One day, nine hours. I'm cool with that. So, let's go ahead and, oops. Orient for the maneuver. Now what we also could do is switch to that stage and um, make it rendezvous with us. But we'll, we'll burn capsule propellants. Interesting how even that little tiny kick of the RCS is seriously shifting that maneuver node's burn direction. I'm not really sure why. Alright. Okay, now we're going to go ahead and warp to that.
Whoa, trippy. Let's zoom out for a bit. Okay, and meanwhile, we still want... We need to dock. We need to... Finish that. We need to land. Okay. That's all reasonable. Um, and we need to complete our stay in space record. Alright, coming up on burn location, I'm just going to recalculate the node. Okay. Now, our closest approach Let's bring up the rendezvous panel. Let me kill the contracts panel. Uh, make you up. Rendezvous planner. Our closest approach is 2.4 kilometers in dropping. Uh, we want to fine tune closest approach to target, 200 meters, in 9 minutes. All right, let's get close. Okay. A 1.2 meter per second burn, huh? All right, we can handle that. Oops, I overcorrected going the other direction. Okay. Now let's get close to that node. and fine-tune on RCS. Oops. 200. Okay, that will do. Now, we want to match velocities at closest approach, which is in 33 minutes, 22 seconds. How are consumables doing? Um, things are going fairly well, it looks like. So, that is not going to be a very expensive match velocity maneuver. So we brought plenty of propellants for this job. Okay, execute that. Ugh, are we going to be on the dark side? Yeah. That's annoying. Well, we have lights. It's not like we don't have lights. All right. 
that is acceptable. Okay, and we're gonna um, zoom out so I can see. All right. And we're warping until I can actually see a thing. Now we should almost be on the light side. Yes, indeed. I really don't particularly want to try docking on the dark side, even though we do have lights. Um, There is that jump when we go on and off rails, which is very annoying, which is something that 1.1.3 should, I believe, correct. Um, but 1.1.3, this is not, sadly. Because, ah, now we're on the light side. All right, now we can start to be serious. Um, Where are you? There you are. Okay, 169 meter. Switch to locked. So we need to pitch up slightly and come left just a hair. Okay, align with the target. And we want to control from our docking port. And let's turn the lights on, because why not? Oh, we'll do it this way, actually. Um, and let's bring up our closure speed. To a whole half a meter per second. which means it would take five minutes to actually get there, so let's get a reasonable closure speed. I know, I'm, I'm a bad realism overhaul player for doing that. Um, all right, now we're, now we're coming in much faster. Okay, and now we can start our breaking burn. All right, that's decent. Now, let's align. Ugh, and it's it's got some rotation, so let's tell it to kill its rotation. Kill. Okay. Now. Now we get to a line. And right click the docking port. Come on. Let me right click the docking port. Maybe we can do it from this end. There we are. Set as target. All right, and let's bring the docking port alignment indicator up. I 
I did select the control from here, didn't I? Oh, I just wasn't seeing the thing open. No vessel targeted, what do you... Oh, because I double-clicked the stupid thing. Now, I think I wanted actually this inverted, if memory serves. Um, let's burn a little bit to get closer. We're already too far to this side. Let's align back up. Okay. Now note that our um, That is our shared RCS and main engine. Whoops. Oh, shoot. Son of a... I forgot that my stupid throttle was going to be stupid. Well, so much for that. So much for that. Um, that brought us in rather faster than I would have liked. Um, one meter per second. Okay. Hopefully my throttle doesn't decide that now would be a great time to spaz out. Note that we're not going to do this from IVA, because that's a th not a thing that is going to happen. We are going to realign. Okay. Lining up. Now we've reached more or less horizontal alignment. Yeah. Okay. The lights don't seem to be doing any good, so I'll just turn them off. Okay. Now we're f not unreasonably aligned. Now I always get flipped around with that. Alright, now we're basically aligned. Now I just have to inch us over. Why do I always 
get flipped on that indicator. Let's not alert it. Let's not um, invert it. All right, so we need to go. There we are. Reaching horizontal alignment. Okay, and horizontal alignment. Okay. Looks like we have a decent alignment. Let's move forward. That's probably a little fast, but we'll take it. Nine meters. I thought I'd fixed that in RO. I thought the magnet force was disabled for that. It's disabled for all the other ports. I don't know why it's not disabled for these. But we have hard lock. And so we have completed the docking port contract. Now, turn that off, turn that off. Um, I really should have action grouped these things thinking about it now. Because I want them off. So that we can use the stage's main propulsion. Come on. There we go. Shut down. And last one. Shut down. All right, because we're going to want to control. Let's control from here. All right, we are going to want to boost up to an apogee of 500 kilometers and beat that record. So let's go ahead and do that. Can get rid of this. Docking board alignment indicator. Now we are nearing apogee. So let's cruise on up to app. Uh, we actually wanted to fire perigee, but that's okay. Do we want to? No, we don't want to stay docked forever. So let's let's just do this here. It's fine. College, right, is a thing that we should do. Okay.
Now we can cast off. So let's switch back to this. Control from here. Undock. And that was a success. Let's go ahead and activate our engines again. And on the other vessel, we need to deorbit. So we'll want to set up a maneuver node for Apogee. Oh, we can do it after. We can do it later. That's fine. Um, actually, there's no particular reason to even bother to do that. We'll just set it to debris right now. So back to here. So the next task we have to do, uh, let's check how long we have to orbit. Okay, so we've done we've done that part. Now we just have to go EVA. So Eloise Martel about to become the first human being to walk in space. Crew hatch. EVA. And there she is. Let's free float. Take an EVA report. Keep it. That's a fair amount of science. Let's grab the ladder again because we don't want to go far. Board. And we want to review store data and transmit it. Man, that's taking forever. Also, how are we doing for those records? Uh, the time stay in space for two days thing reset, even though we've already been a day in space. That's annoying, but how it works. All right, so. Well, let's get that record and get the 500 kilometer apogee record. Wee! Bingo. 500 long. Crude record altitude. All right. Oh, except I think that killed the data transmission, didn't it? I don't know. Well, we'll just we'll go EVA again and <laughs> uh, get another crew rep EVA report. Yeah, that killed it. Ugh. Well, we'll have a while to wait this time. Um. Yeah, and it looks like when we go out of signal there, we'll we'll bounce something off Warbler 1. Can Warbler 1 see us, actually? No. Ah, uh, are we going to have to do this again? Probably. Nope. Wrong thing to do with the engines. Come on, engines. Yeah, we lost connection again.
only up to 61%. All right, let's try this one more time. How did we not have a crew report from there? That confuses me. How do we not have... S I guess we're over the horizon for that. That's interesting. All right, now we're not. And we'll do the whole EVA dance one more time. Now that we actually have signal. EVA report. Keep record. Board. She's getting a bit of a workout. View stored data. Transmit. Alright, yeah, that's going to be... We're going to be able to reach that place. Alright, so we want to do... We're going to want to change periapsis... Uh, cool. So it looks like if we do a deorbit burn from perigee, it'll use up almost all of our retro and bring us to a perigee of zero. That means we don't need a negative perigee per se. We've got plenty of reserve on the heat shield. So we'll do that, and she'll get an even lighter G-load. Particularly having spent so much time in space for this one, I think. Um, Alright, now we've transmitted the EVA thing. Finally. We performed an EVA, now we just have to land or splash. Land or splash. We're not going to break a thousand kilometers on this flight, that's for sure. Um... One day, 22 hours. Let's break the two-day record. I'm going to zoom out so that nobody gets motion sickness. So we'll actually have spent three days in space, but we won't get credit for it. All right, now let's see what Really? Really? Nine hours? All right, now what new record? do we have? Three days. So we did have enough provisions for a week, so let's stretch this out to... let's do another three days. How, how much do we have left here? Ten days, thirteen days, eleven days. The electricity is what I'm more worried about, but we did take seven days of Electricity and I, th yeah. The annoying thing is that the docking and undocking for some reason contract configurator was not smart enough to. Oh no, I'm sorry. It's not contract configurator. It's the records. That that crew in space record does not use a vessel parameter group. It just tracks the active vessel. And when we docked, uh, the active vessel was a new vessel, and therefore that record reset. I think that's why that record reset. It's annoying, but. I don't want to take the performance hit, I guess, of doing it as the other way around. But let's, all right, so let's get our, let's get another record here. How are we doing on electric charge? It's decreasing, but we still have plenty. And we got the record. All right. Excellent. And that gave us a bunch of money. So now we can worry about retrofire. So we want 
this. Oh, that's convenient. We're already more or less aligned. Okay, let's go ahead and warp to the maneuver node. Actually, no. Let's let's make sure that we're going to instead of doing it just at perigee, let's actually make a maneuver node uh, because I want to make sure that we end up in the water. So we're orbiting this way. Let's. Yeah, let's do the Pacific. So, we want a node of about there, and we want node editor 100 and what is it? Minus 156. All right. So that will definitely end up with us in the drink. That's for darn sure. In fact, what if we did it here? We still end up in the drink, so we're actually good. So let's go ahead and... do that then. Guest room. There we are. And I think actually this time, because I don't particularly want to leave my service module in orbit, I will just burn off the service module. And not use the retro stage. Retro stage is really just for some extra insurance, anyway. Or what we can do is make sure we're going to re-enter, and then I guess we'll use the So, the, so we're sure the service module burns up. Alright, that seems fairly sure that the service module will burn up. So let's go ahead and make a node. And that node is going to have a radial out component and a retro out component. Whoa, that's too much. All right, what does that do to our orbit? That gives us an even sharper descent. All right, so let's fire. So we stage away the service module. It has served us well. Let us just quickly make sure that the electric charge is where it should be. Yes, uh, it's all. St we still have full electric charge in the pod. Interestingly, we still have. Yeah, a couple. Of, uh, three, four days, I don't know, some number of days. So that's fine. So, let's align with our second retrofire node. This is just because I didn't want to leave the service module in orbit. Uh, and we'll stage that away. And fire the solids? Oh, that's it. Oh, right. I have to turn on the RCS here first. So we stay aligned. Enable RCS. Yeah, that was that was not awesome of me. All right, and fire these retros. And I think actually we want to burn more like this. Okay, that's fine. Stage away retro module. 
Away it goes. We've armed the parachutes. Let's damp out our rotation. Come on, close. Um, how high up are we? We're still quite high up, aren't we? All right, so let's do our usual trick. We want circular eyes at 140, uh, 130. It's there. No, I don't want a target warbler too. I want my orbital track. Don't want to target things. Just want to create a maneuver. How hard could that be? Retrograde. Okay. And we want to be even higher than it. So that's good. So now we warp until we get close to re-entry. Bingo. Now, we want to turn on surface velocity minus, roll, pitch 35, execute, turn it off. And, right, if memory serves, I basically had to fly the re-entry myself because MechJet was having issues. But that's okay. Can get rid of that note. Let's look at all the things we completed. We got crude altitude record 500 kilometers, crew record of two days. We got first docking. We did a crewed orbital with EVA, and we're going to land or splash down to get credit for that. We passed the Kármán line. We're going to land or splash down to get credit for that. We did a crew record of three days. And on our next flight, we can hit the crew record of seven days. And MechJeb is really having problems here. So I guess I will turn MechJeb off, which is very sad. And stabilize with SAS for now. Okay, that will do. Oops. Looks like we picked up some right roll. There go our retros. Whoa, picking up a bit of... Oh, I forgot to turn descent mode on. No wonder things are screwy. All right, that makes more sense. Okay. There's our service module combusting. That's, I don't know, that might be the right, that might be the retro module. Probably is the retro module. I think we moved far enough away from the service module that we won't see hiding our hair of it. It'll just silently die. Okay. Down to 70 kilometers. It's this descent mode is on, isn't it? I did turn it on this time. 
Yes. Okay. Let's roll level. Yeah, because I didn't have it on early. Um, this is going to be a somewhat rougher re-entry than the last one. Whoops, got to roll back centered again. There we go. Three and a half Gs. Okay, we've peaked just under three and three quarters G's. Back down to three and a half G's. Descent rate slowing. Minimum descent rate of 16 meters per second. Now sync rate is increasing. Passing 50 kilometers. Quite mild G's. We've already shed half our speed. Under Mach 8. That's nice. <laughs> G's increasing again. But I don't think they'll hit the peak from before. Oops, we're inclining ourselves. Yep, G's already peaked again. Much lower peak than before. Now we're at a plane level of Mach. We're at Mach, under Mach 4. The height is something you could reach on a zoom climb if you tried really hard. So we have left the regime of the space capsule and entered the regime of the plane. Mach 1.5, 25 kilometers. And we 
we are subsonic. So we're going to turn descent mode off. Well, first, where's the... Gonna put the thrust limiter back. Oops. Ah, come on. There we are. All right, now I'm going to turn descent mode off. We still have over half of our MMH and NTO. So I think we'd better dump it. Don't want that hanging around when we land. And dump. Okay. Rogue out. That's going to slow us down some. And Drogue goes fully deployed. That's going to slow us down a fair bit more. Stabling our, stabilizing our descent. And main comes and deploys. And drug cut and main fully deploys. Giving us a nice little over 5 meter per second descent rate. So we'll speed up time. meters, 700 meters, 600 meters, 500 meters, 400, 300, 200, 150, let's go to normal time, and splash down. Bingo. All right, that was highly successful. Spacewalk and then return. Excellent work. Six, almost 64,000 funds. And we pass the Carmen line, 31780. Let's recover the vessel. Point two science for yet another vessel returned from Earth orbit. Three million dollars. And Eloise Martel also advances to level one. Now we have 402,000 funds. That's a lot of funds. Um, let's look at what else we have queued up. I think having 
docked. I don't think I need to do docking again. I think our next mission will be a duration mission. So let's go ahead and scrap that docking. Target. Um, now, what, what can we choose? Well, we can... We're going to save this until the next capsule we have to test. Because why not? Um, we might as well get paid for that. Human orbital. All right. So we're definitely going to want to take that, but it has a 90-day window, and it's going to take more than 90 days to build the next. Oh no, it's 68 days. But I think I would still feel more comfortable being somewhat closer to when that's ready. We're going to rename this to Beagle Four, given that the last one was actually a success. Um, finally, let us assess the state of these things. It's one year to the Venus window. It's one and three quarters years to the Mars window. Improved instrumentation is coming due in 20 days. Mature orbital rocketry, 310 days. I don't think we'll be able to get mature orbital rocketry ready before going to Venus. We will have it ready before going to Mars. Because we, we have to not just unlock it, but then fly enough booster development flights that our engines are reasonably reliable. Uh, let's look at the upgrades, because we have a lot of money. It means we should probably start spending some money. Uh, and also, let me look at building times. Vehicle assembly building, 217 days until we get a second build rate. Um, and we also definitely need to raise our research rate. So we have 62 points right now. That's, you know, okay. It's 1956. Um, well, it's almost 1957. And we have 400,000 funds. So we're definitely going to sink a lot of those funds into these points. Because I think we're not going to need an R&D upgrade for a while. And that upgrade is insanely expensive. Uh, we're not going to need an astronaut complex upgrade until we're talking about going to other planets and planting flags um, because we won't actually need this until we need to be able to plant flags. Mission control, we're going to want to do this upgrade at some point, but it doesn't really do us any good now. Uh, the main point is that when we start needing more than seven contracts at once, and since we don't even have anything in flight, that's not really a concern. Uh, the VAB we already upgraded. Tracking station, we don't need to track asteroids, really. And the launch pad, we already upgraded the second pad. We could buy a third pad, but I don't think we need that yet. So yeah, we come back to spending those funds on upgrades. The last thing is that it will be somewhat expensive. I mean, let's just check what the entry costs of these things are. Um, proved instrumentation. SD2 solar panel. Oh, it won't tell me what the entry costs are. That's kind of obnoxious. Uh, but we can guesstimate that it's about 20 times what it says. So we need to unlock this, that's for sure. So 400 times 20 is 8 million bucks. Solar panels, 50 times something like 20. That's fairly cheap. The big panels, expensive, but still fairly cheap to unlock. Radiator, radiator. Okay, so we don't get right. We don't get expanding panels there. We get them in electrics. But going to Venus, we're not going to need more than say these things. Even going, even a Mars flyby wouldn't really need more than. Yeah, I just I don't see where the entry cost is displayed. Um, oh, what am I saying? It's <laughs> the entry cost is displayed without having to right click. Yeah, so. We're probably going to... That's $9 million. That's $8 million. That's $8 million. That's $24 million. So... We're talking about we want to save a reserve of 50, 60,000 funds so we can build one launch vehicle. 70,000, 80... Let's, let's keep a reserve of 100,000. Um, although we obviously can fly a few basic contracts while we're waiting for that node to unlock. Um, but so yeah, let's keep a cushion of 100,000, which means we have 300,000 funds to spend, which means an awful lot of points. Uh, 
All right. Yeah, so we went from like 62 to 92 points. So we want to increase our build rate up to, two, let's say 2.2. Then, and I believe once that unlocks, it'll effectively be 3.3. Then we you can sink the rest into research and get a fair amount of science a day. 0.33 science a day. So a third of a science point a day. One science point every three days. Now let's look at how fast this stuff goes. That's nice. That's down to 12. That's down to 182. We m might, if we manage to make some more money, uh, we might be able to flight prove those H1s before our Venus window, which will give us significantly improved capability. We also need to flight prove. Uh, our ejection stage because that that able star stage is just not going to cut it. So we'll go ahead and unlock uh, that stage combustion engine, the S15400, which we got from the stage combustion node, um, and then we'll have a, a fairly capable ejection stage. Uh, we could also get the uh, now that we have flight control, we could get the the Gemini variant of the Agena engine. Uh, model of what is it, 8247 I think. Uh, that has 15 restarts, doesn't have ology, it's great, but it has um, it's hy hypergolic propellants, low specific impulse compared to the S15400, and I think we, we need the specific impulse more. Uh, that build rate is now rather lower than it was, so yeah, on that happy note, I think we might as well call an end to this episode, so thanks everybody for watching, uh, I hope that you enjoyed the episode. I hope that you learned something that was helpful to you. And I hope to see you again soon. So thanks and bye bye. Eight hundred meters. Seven hundred meters. Six hundred meters. 500 meters, 400, 300, 200, 150, let's go to normal time. And splash down. Bingo. All right, that was highly successful. Spacewalk, then return. Excellent work. Six, almost 64,000 funds. And we passed the Carmen line, 31,780. Let's recover the vessel. Point two science for yet another vessel returned from Earth orbit. Three million dollars. And Eloise Martel also advances to level one. Now we have 402,000 funds. That's a lot of funds. Um, let's look at what else we have queued up. I think having docked, I don't think I need to do docking again. I think our next mission will be a duration mission. So let's go ahead and scrap that docking. Target. Um, now, what, what can we choose? Well, we can... We're going to save this until the next capsule we have to test. Because, why not? Um, we might as well get paid for that. Human orbital. Alright. So... We're definitely going to want to take that, but it has a 90-day window, and it's going to take more than 90 days to build the next... Oh, no, it's 68 days. But I think I would still feel more comfortable being somewhat closer to when that's ready. We're going to rename this to Beagle 4, given that the last one was actually a success. Um, finally, let us assess the state of these things. 
it's one year to the Venus window. Electricity, and I, th yeah, the annoying thing is that the docking and undocking, for some reason, contract configurator was not smart enough to, oh, no, I'm sorry, it's not contract configurator, it's the records, that, that crew and space record does not use a vessel parameter group, it just tracks the active vessel, and when we docked, uh, the active vessel was a new vessel, and therefore that record reset. I think that's why that record reset. It's annoying, but I don't want to take the performance hit, I guess, of doing it as the other way around. But let's, all right, so let's get our, let's get another record here. How are we doing on electric charge? It's decreasing, but we still have plenty. And we got the record. All right. Excellent. And that gave us a bunch of money. So now we can worry about retrofire. So we want this. Oh, that's convenient. We're already more or less aligned. Okay, let's go ahead and warp to the maneuver node. Actually, no. Let's let's make sure that we're going to instead of doing it just at perigee, let's actually make a maneuver node uh, because I want to make sure that we end up in the water. So we're orbiting this way. Let's. Yeah, let's do the Pacific. So, we want a node of about there, and we want we're an editor, 100 and, what is it, minus 156. All right. So that will definitely end up with us in the drink. That's for darn sure. In fact, what if we did it here? We still end up in the drink, so we're actually good. So let's go ahead and... We have enough delta V that we can afford that. We'll engage the thrusters. We'll come around to our maneuver node direction. And change MechJab's tolerance because with these little thrusters, we want a tighter tolerance. Um, yeah, I'm annoyed that that relative inclination isn't closer, but we could have made it closer by waiting another day. But, you know, oh well. kind of didn't want to wait. So let's look at what the so we need to complete that orbit for the EVA. Then we need to do the EVA then we need to transmit the data. Whoops, we passed by that node. Oh, I think interestingly what I forgot to put on this was any kind of antennas, but happily our capsule has its own antenna. Ah, uh, so let's execute this node. Man, that really does kind of look like a small Gemini, doesn't it? All right. Now, happily, these don't require ologing first, so we're good to just light them up. 
and Eloise gets a nice view of the Earth passing below her. And planes matched. Now let's go ahead and do a home and transfer to the target. Uh, no, we're not waiting 32 days. I find that hard to believe. Um, The issue, of course, being that uh, now, if memory serves, this was an interesting thing to get to orbit. It did not have much in the way of <sighs> accessibility. Access. Capability. 40. Now we need to set up our target. And it's somewhere over here, isn't it? No, that's Echo. 2. Warbler. Uh, I should get a mod that gives me a list of by, list by name. Because finding this thing is going to be a pain. Um, let's look at what orbit we're right on. It's that one. Set as target. Okay. So yeah, we're half an orbit away. That's gonna that's gonna take a little while to rendezvous with. Um, oh, and I didn't accept that human. Orbital contract, but that's okay. Uh, I'm fairly sure that I can do it this way anyway. Um, is inclina relative inclination increasing or decreasing? It's increasing. All right, let's let's go ahead and just launch this now then. will correct their inclination on the way up. Which I'm fairly sure we can do. It will require going somewhat south first. Because the Earth has rotated past the plane of that orbit, Therefore, to get back on the plane of that orbit, we're going to have to go south uh, and then go north again. We basically need to go south to match that. horizontal alignment. Okay. And horizontal alignment. Okay. Looks like we have a decent alignment. Let's move forward. That's probably a little fast, but we'll take it. Nine meters. Wrong 
wrong way. Right way. Right way. Okay. Break. And... Ugh, I thought I'd fixed that in our... Uh, I thought the magnet force was disabled for that. It's disabled for all the other ports. I don't know why it's not disabled for these. But we have hard lock. And so we have completed the docking port contract. Now... Turn that off. Turn that off. Um... I really should have action grouped these things, thinking about it now. Because I want them off. So that we can use the stage's main propulsion. Come on. There we go. Shut down. And last one. Shut down. All right, because we're going to want to control. Let's control from here. All right, we are going to want to boost up to an apogee of 500 kilometers and beat that record. Kind of didn't want to wait, so. Let's look at what the So we need to complete that orbit for the EVA. Then we need to do the EVA. Then we need to transmit the data. Whoops, we passed by that node. Oh, I think, interestingly, what I forgot to put on this was any kind of antennas, but happily our capsule has its own antenna. Ah, uh, so let's execute this node. Man, that really does kind of look like a small Gemini, doesn't it? Alright. Now, happily, these don't require ologing first, so we're good to just light them up. And Eloise gets a nice view of the Earth passing below her. And planes matched. Now let's go ahead and do a home and transfer to the target. Uh, no, we're not waiting 32 days. I find that hard to believe. Um, The issue, of course, being that uh, our apogee and perigee closely match that, so the periods are the same, so we're not actually changing our relative um, position in the orbit. So we're going to raise our perigee up to be close to our apogee, which should not cost very much. Three hundred. All right, so let's actually wait until we get to... It's not like we don't have lights. Hmm. All right. 
that is acceptable. Okay, and we're going to um, zoom out so I can see. All right. And we're warping until I can actually see a thing. Now we should almost be on the light side. Yes, indeed. I really don't particularly want to try docking on the dark side, even though we do have lights. Um, There is that jump when we go on and off rails, which is very annoying, which is something that 1.1.3 should, I believe, correct. Um, but 1.1.3, this is not, sadly. Because, ah, now we're on the light side. All right, now we can start to be serious. Um, Where are you? There you are. Okay, 169 meter. Switch to locked. So we need to pitch up slightly and come left just a hair. Okay, align with the target. And we want to control from our docking port. Okay. Interesting. Did we have a failure or did I just miscalculate things? No, I just miscalculated things. That's fine. Whoops. We are off plane. We are very much off plane. Let's go to 31. How's our pitch up? That is decent. That is very decent. Okay, so a relative inclination is acceptable. Uh, we don't have to nail it because this is just for interplanetary purposes. Uh, we just need to be relatively close to the plane of the ecliptic. So we want maneuver planner. We want advanced transfer to another planet. Let's look for a Mars window. Well, let's look for a Venus window first. Porkchop plot tells us that our best option is 3561 meters per second, departure in 363 days, 11 hours, 27 minutes, transit duration 147 days. I think that's an opposition transfer for Venus. Um, so, we want a raw time alarm. We don't want it attached to a vessel. Venus, 3561. 
in 363-11-26-35. Close enough. Okay, so that's our first window. Now we'll go target Mars. That's interesting. That's a really crummy Mars window, isn't it? Wow, looks like we picked up some right roll. There go our retros. Whoa, picking up a bit of... Oh, I forgot to turn descent mode on. No wonder things are screwy. All right, that makes more sense. Okay. There's our service module combusting. That's, I don't know, that might be the right, that might be the retro module. Probably is the retro module. I think we moved far enough away from the service module that we won't see hide nor hair of it. It'll just silently die. Okay. Down to 70 kilometers. It's this descent mode is on, isn't it? I did turn it on this time. Yes. Okay. Let's roll level. Yeah, because I didn't have it on early. Um, this is going to be a somewhat rougher re-entry than the last one. Whoops, got to roll back centered again. There we go. Three and a half Gs. Okay, we've peaked just under three and three quarters G's. Back. All right, we're about two kilometers per second short of orbit. That leaves about 13, 1400 in the stage. I think we want to zero our pitch.
let's try to tweak inclination just a little bit. Pitch up. Interesting. Did we have a failure, or did I just miscalculate things? No, I just miscalculated things. That's fine. Whoops. We are off plane. We are very much off plane. Let's go to 31. How's our pitch up? Ready unlock it? Let's find out. Uh, no, we have 30 days left. Um, with that, we'll have access to an antenna that will let us get to Venus for sure. We'll even let us get to Mercury, but will only let us get to Mars at a conjunction transfer window. So see, we're here. Uh, given that that conjunction transfer... Um, let's zoom out a little. All right, and that was... Okay, that's in one year and 258 days. So, one year... Uh, what was that? Oh, that's that's that... <laughs> that's that thing we sent out into the solar SOI. Uh, anyway. So... So this is Earth's orbit, this blue line. Now, one year in come on, one year and two hundred sixty-five days is one year ninety one eighty two seventy. That puts Earth about here. Mars does its thing. Conjunction transfer means, and that duration is one hundred forty-six days. So that bring Earth to about here. That means Mars will be about here. So, shortest distance. And so we only fly that path. Opposition transfer. That's those things with the, like, the... Let's zoom out so you can see. Uh, that's with the one-year transit duration times. Um, that means that we spiral slowly out and end up here in a year's time, where Earth is back there. So we have to do the 150 million kilometers, another 150 million kilometers, and then even more. So our antennas can't do that. So we're, we're gonna... Yeah, we're... <laughs> they, we're not gonna be able to do that. Um, so, yeah. That's all that setup. So we're going to go ahead and go back to the Space Center now that this is in orbit. This little docking target. Passing 50 kilometers. Quite mild G's. We've already shed half our speed.
Mach. Under Mach, under Mach 8. That's nice. G's increasing again. But I don't think they'll hit the peak from before. Oops, we're inclining ourselves. Yep, G's already peaked again. Much lower peak than before. Now we're at a plane level of Mach. We're under Mach 4. The height is something you could reach on a zoom climb if you tried really hard. So we have left the regime of the space capsule and entered the regime of the plane. Under Mach 1.5, 25 kilometers. Okay, look at that relative inclination going down. All right, and that I think is about as good as it gets. sort of waddling. Alright, we're about two kilometers per second short of orbit. That leaves about 13, 1400 in the stage. I think we want to zero our pitch. Let's try to tweak inclination just a little bit. Pitch up.
right way. Okay, break. And ugh, I thought I'd fixed that in our uh, I thought the magnet force was disabled for that. It's disabled for all the other ports. I don't know why it's not disabled for these. But we have hard lock. And so we have completed the docking port contract. Now turn that off. Turn that off. Um I really should have action grouped these things, thinking about it now. Because I want them off. So that we can use the stage's main propulsion. Come on. There we go. Shut down. And last one. Shut down. All right, because we're going to want to control. Let's control from here. All right, we are going to want to boost up to an apogee of 500 kilometers and beat that record. So let's go ahead and do that. Can get rid of this. Docking board alignment indicator. Now we are nearing apogee. So let's cruise on up to app. Ah, uh, we actually wanted to fire at Perigee, but that's okay. Do we want to? No, we don't want to stay docked forever. So let's let's just do this here. It's fine. Six hundred meters, five hundred meters, four hundred, three hundred, two hundred, one hundred, fifty. Let's go to normal time. And splash down. Bingo. All right, that was highly successful. Spacewalk then return. Excellent work. Six, almost 64,000 funds. And we passed the Carmen line, 31,780. Recover the vessel. Point two science for yet another vessel returned from Earth orbit. Three million dollars. And Eloise Martel also advances to level one. Now we have 402,000 funds. That's a lot of funds. Um, let's look at what else we have queued up. I think having docked, I don't think I need to do docking again. I think our next mission will be a duration mission. So let's go ahead and scrap that docking target. Um, 
Now, what, what can we choose? Well, we can We're going to save this until the next capsule we have to test, because why not? Um, we might as well get paid for that. Human orbital. All right. So we're definitely going to want to take that, but it has a 90-day window, and it's going to take more than 90 days to build the next. Oh, no, it's 68 days. But I think I would still feel more comfortable being somewhat closer to when that's ready. We're going to rename this to Beagle 4, given that the last one was actually a success. Um, finally, let us assess the state of these things. It's one year. Okay, that is decent. That is very decent. Okay, so a relative inclination is acceptable. Uh, we don't have to nail it because this is just for interplanetary purposes. Uh, we just need to be relatively close to the planet of the ecliptic. So we want maneuver planner. We want advanced transfer to another planet. Let's look for a Mars window. Well, let's look for a Venus window first. Porkchop plot tells us that our best option is 3561 meters per second, departure in 363 days, 11 hours, 27 minutes, transit duration 147 days. I think that's an opposition transfer for Venus. Um, so we want a raw time alarm. We don't want it attached to a vessel. Venus, 3561. In 363, 11, 26, 35. Close enough. OK, so that's our first window. Now we'll go target Mars. That's interesting. That's a really crummy Mars window, isn't it? Wow, that's a really crummy Mars window. Uh, can we zoom out some? All right, now it's finding something better. That's three years away. There's actually a Mars window in 76 days that's in the 4700 range. But let's look at this. Transit duration, one year. So that's an opposition transfer. We need a conjunction transfer. Uh, let's reset. Could we just launch them back to back? That's an interesting question. Um, hmm. It's about six or seven minutes to orbit. Um, hmm. I think it's probably safer to wait a day. So let's go ahead and warp to that being ready. And we'll roll it out to that pad. Let's warp to this being ready. And we'll roll it out to this pad. Alright, now I'm going to go ahead and launch this into the plane of the moon. Because, as I mentioned towards the end of last episode, we're going to use Mechjeb's ability um, to plot 
to do a pork chop plot, take transfer windows into account, to figure out when our next transfer windows to Mars and to Venus are. So, uh, we're gradually pumping that stage full. Let's go ahead and figure out. Oh, that's that's geostationary. I mean, that's okay. Set as target. We are. All right. So launch into plane of target. Now I have to reset these numbers to be right for this launch vehicle. Um. I think about like that. Thought I told it to launch into the plane of the target. Well, we'll do that now. Okay. Okay, five minutes away. We're very low tech. We're doing this entirely on batteries. We have solar panels neither on this nor on the the actual. Pitch up. Okay. Interesting. Did we have a failure or did I just miscalculate things? No, I just miscalculated things. That's fine. Whoops. We are off plane. We are very much off plane. Let's go to 31. How's our pitch up? That is decent. That is very decent. Okay, so a relative inclination is acceptable. Uh, we don't have to nail it because this is just for interplanetary purposes. Uh, we just need to be relatively close to the plane of the ecliptic. So we want maneuver planner. We want advanced transfer to another planet. Let's look for a Mars window. Well, let's look for a Venus window first. Porkchop plot tells us that but 1.1.3 this is not, sadly. 
because, ah, now we're on the light side. All right, now we can start to be serious. Um, where are you? There you are. Okay, 169 meter. Switch to locked. So we need to pitch up slightly and come left just a hair. Okay, align with the target. And we want to control from our docking port. And let's turn the lights on, because why not? Oh, we'll do it this way, actually. Um, and let's bring up our closure speed. to a whole half a meter per second. Which means it would take five minutes to actually get there, so let's get a reasonable closure speed. I know, I'm, I'm a bad realism overhaul player for doing that. Um... All right, now we're now we're coming in much faster. Okay, and now we can start our braking burn. All right. That's decent. Now, let's align. Ugh, and it's it's got some rotation. So let's tell it to kill its rotation. Kill. Okay. Now. Now we get to a line. And right click the docking port. Come on. Let me right click the docking port. Maybe we can do it from this end. There we are. Set as target. Alright, and let's bring the. Okay, there go our retros. Whoa, picking up a bit of. Oh, I forgot to turn descent mode on. No wonder things are screwy. All right, that makes more sense. Okay. There's our service module combusting. That's I don't know. That might be the right. That might be the retro module. Probably is the retro module. I think we moved far enough away from the service module that we won't see hiding our hair of it. It'll just silently die. Okay. Down to 70 kilometers. It's this descent mode is on, isn't it? I did turn it on this time. Yes. Okay. Let's roll level. Yeah, because I didn't have it on early. Um, this is going to be a somewhat rougher re-entry than the last one. Whoops, got to roll back centered again. There we go. Three and a half G's.
Okay, we've peaked just under three and three quarters G's. Back down to three and a half G's. Descent rate slowing. Minimum descent rate of 16 meters per second. Now sync rate is increasing. Just we'll go EVA again and <laughs> uh, get another crew rep EVA report. Yeah, that killed it. Ugh. Well, we'll have a while to wait this time. Um. Yeah, and it looks like when we go out of signal there, we'll we'll bounce something off Warbler 1. Can Warbler 1 see us, actually? No. Ah, uh, are we going to have to do this again? Probably. Nope. Wrong thing to do with the engines. Come on, engines. Yeah, we lost connection again. Only up to 61%. Alright, let's try this one more time. How did we not have a crew report from there? That confuses me. How do we not have... S I guess we're over the horizon for that. That's interesting. Alright, now we're not. And we'll do the whole EVA dance one more time. Now that we actually have signal. EVA report. Keep record. Board. She's getting a bit of a workout. View stored data. Transmit. Alright, yeah, that's going to be... going to be able to reach that place. Alright, so we want to do... We're going to want to change periapsis. Uh... Cool. So it looks like if we do a deorbit burn from perigee, it'll use up almost all of our retro and bring us to a perigee of zero. That and right click the docking port. Come on, let me right click the docking port. Maybe we can do it from this end. There we are. Set as target. Alright, and let's bring the docking port alignment indicator up. I did select the control from here, didn't I? I just wasn't seeing the thing open. No vessel targeted. What do you? Oh, because I double clicked the stupid thing. <sighs> there. Okay. Now, I think I wanted actually this. 
inverted if memory serves um, burn a little bit to get closer. Yeah, we're already too far to this side. Let's align back up. Okay. Now note that our um, that is our shared RCS and main engine. Whoops. Oh, shoot. Son of a... I forgot that my stupid throttle was going to be stupid. Well, so much for that. So much for that. Um, that brought us in rather faster than I would have liked. Um, one meter per second. Okay. Hopefully my throttle doesn't decide that now would be a great time to spaz out. Okay, we've peaked just under three and three quarters G's. Back down to three and a half G's. Descent rate slowing. Minimum descent rate of 16 meters per second. Now sync rate is increasing. Passing 50 kilometers. Quite mild G's. We've already shed half our speed. Under Mach 8. That's nice. <laughs> G's increasing again. But I don't think they'll hit the peak from before. Oops, we're inclining ourselves. Yep, G's already peaked again. Much lower peak than before. <laughs> <laughs> 